So on the 30th of June this year, the government introduced some legislation called the Electric Vehicles Smart Charge Point Regulations 2021, released in 2022. So this legislation governs, yeah, you've guessed it, how all EV charge points going forwards must be smart. And unlike previously, when they've talked about smart charge points, this legislation goes into a lot of detail about what the definition of smart is and what minimum requirements they must comply with. So in this video, I'm gonna go into detail about what this means for installers and customers. So this is me in the edit, and I've realized that the video is a little bit uh, cumbersome as it is. So I'm gonna split it into two parts. So part one is gonna cover what the changes are and why they've been implemented. And then part two will cover what the impact of those changes has been to us as installers and you as customers. So this is part one. Roll the credits. So there have already been quite a few videos on this subject and I don't want to duplicate what these videos are doing. So what I want to do is give an overview of what the legislation entails, what it's all about, and then because we've been doing this for a couple of months now, talk about what the, some of the biggest impacts have been and what you need to think about if you're installing these charge points or if you're a customer and you've had a charge point installed recently that complies with the new regulations. I also want to give a big thanks to Omi and Easy, who were the uh, only charge point manufacturers to do webinars and training on this subject, preparing installers for the transition. There have been some impacts to us as installers, so um, this training was really useful to prepare us for that. Now, forgive me if I'm looking at my notes on the computer, um, but there's quite a lot of information to get through, and I don't want to get it wrong. But before I do go into any detail, give us a cheeky thumbs up on that like button, subscribe to get notifications of our future videos on electric vehicles, electric vehicle charge points and all related technologies, and check us out on our other social media platforms. So who do the new regulations apply to? Well, firstly, the people who need to comply with the regulations are anybody selling charge points. So that includes distributors and if you're an installer providing the charge point for your customers, you are selling that charge point to the customer. So you must comply with those regulations. Now, this applies to all electric vehicle uh, charge points installed at homes and businesses, but it doesn't apply to public car parks. So why is this legislation being introduced? Well, there's a lot of good reasons, but to summarise, it's to make sure that the electric vehicle charge points being installed in the UK are preparing and are future-proofed for a new, greener electric future. So what does that mean? So firstly, we've all heard those trolls on the internet, in your local pubs, in your local supermarkets, saying things like, ah, well, you know, in 2023, everybody's going to have an electric car. Not true. And they're all going to plug them in on the 1st of January 2023 and the national grid is going to crash. And they're right. Wasn't expecting that, was you? Well, they're not really right. But they would be right if everybody had dumb charge points. This would mean that when people got home from work, when electricity was in its highest demand, they would plug the cars in and they would start charging immediately, putting a huge strain on the national grid, possibly causing blackouts and power outages. Fortunately for us, the industry as a whole isn't as dumb as the local trolls would have you believe. Part of this legislation is ensuring that this doesn't happen. So, what are the changes? Number one, all charge points must be able to connect to a user application to allow controls. So I'll state this a few times, but it is now illegal to sell a charge point to someone that doesn't comply with these regulations. And that includes being able to connect to some kind of application and be controlled to allow scheduling and override timers 
um, and configure when you want the cars to charge. So last year, I did a video on why it was a bad idea to buy a dumb charger. And even though you can see these still for sale on places like Amazon and eBay, not only is it now a bad idea, it's also now illegal to sell these charge points. Another change in line with that first requirement of being able to schedule your car to charge at specific times is that when the charge point is installed, it comes default set up to charge at off-peak times. Generally, most manufacturers are interpreting that to be midnight to 8 a.m. This is to, one, encourage people to play with the charge schedules, to set them to suit what they need, but also it means if they don't set up the application or the means of controlling when the car is scheduled, it will automatically be charging in the hours when electricity is in its lowest demand. So the whole idea of this is to prevent chargers being installed, which are smart, but then being used as dumb chargers. So the charge points will be installed and they'll automatically work with the charge point schedule set up to charge in the off-peak hours. Overall, this again reduces strain on the grid and ensures we have a safe green electric future. The next change is a random delay in the start of your charging sessions. Now this one's quite interesting and I couldn't understand why it was in place at first. Then I watched a video with Dr. Chris from My Energy, co-creator of the Zappy, and this was explained. So when a charging session is scheduled to start or a car is plugged in and it's automatically due to start charging, there will be a random delay somewhere between zero and 10 minutes. This changes every time the session starts. And the idea is that, let's say, for example, there's a power cut. When the power comes back on, this random delay will mean in a specific area that, say, has 100 charge points, they will all start charging at different times between the power coming back on and 10 minutes after the power comes back on. So instead of all these charge points instantly coming back on and putting a large strain on the network, which has just been started up, it means the power will ramp up slowly over 10 minutes. Another good application for this is where a lot of people in the area are subscribed to a specific cheap night rate tariff. We, for example, have cheap hours between 12.30 and 4.30 in the morning. At the moment, everybody's chargers start coming on at 12.30 on the dot. If this happens to a lot of people, that's a big, quick spike in demand that the grid has never really seen before. So to prevent this, there's a random delay between zero and 10 minutes. It'll be different every night. And it means everybody's chargers start coming on between those times and the power ramps up slowly. This gives the national grid and the local operators time to prepare and ramp up the power as required. Because as we all know, electricity isn't just there in the socket, it's being produced and it has to be produced at a rate that matches the demand. So as demand increases, power stations are turned on, wind turbines are turned on and the power ramps up. So again, this just eases the strain on any infrastructure and makes it nice and easy for the grid to balance out these power requirements. Another useful change is that charge points will be compatible with demand response services. What are these? Demand response services are methods to control the charge points to respond to when supply is higher than demand. There are a few different ways companies are doing this at the moment. A remote signal can be issued to the charge point to turn it off when supply is at its highest. And in return, you get cash back in the form of vouchers to pay you to not charge a car. I think this is an area that's still being explored and it will grow a lot in the future. I'm sure we'll see some innovative solutions. And if you're flexible on when your EV can be charged, the likelihood is that you'll be able to make or at least save money 
by doing so. So the last change involves cybersecurity. This is fairly simple for customers because if the charge points are compliant with the new cybersecurity demands, it's okay. It means your charge point is safer, it's less likely to be hacked or broken into. But this is quite difficult for manufacturers to implement. This is why, unlike the rest of this charge points legislation, which has to be complied with by the 30th of June 2022, manufacturers have been given till December of 2022 to make sure their charge points comply with these requirements. So they have to comply with ETSI EN 303-645. Now, I'm sure this document is a thrilling read. I haven't been through it myself. All the charge point manufacturers will have been through it. So this will make charge points harder to hack and harder to break into. And this could prevent potential cyber attacks where, for example, turn all the chargers off causing disruption or turn all the chargers on, potentially crashing the national grid at a critical time. So I hope that was useful. Make sure you stick around for part two of this video where we talk about the impact of these changes on installers and customers. To do that, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications of our future videos. Give us a cheeky thumbs up on that like button. Make sure you check out our other social media channels. And in the meantime, thanks very much for watching.